Hello, my name is Michelle and I am, um, I guess, relatively new to bullet journaling. Um, I discovered it a little bit over a year ago. Um, so for most of my life, I've struggled to find uh, a planner solution that, that works well for me and nothing has quite ever worked. And I've tried, I'm sure if you're watching this, probably you've had the same thing where I've tried a bunch of different kinds of um, planners and planner systems and digital apps and all kinds of things and nothing ever quite worked. Um, one of the reasons is because uh, I both have um, journals and planners and I have I need a lot of different kinds of flexibility and no system that I found um, allowed me to do like all of the different kinds of project planning and things that I wanted to do. So um, I started, uh, I, I bought um, I bought a uh, me and my big ideas kind of planner about a year ago started using that it was good but I was still a little bit dissatisfied with it and I started watching a bunch of um, videos on YouTube and stumbled onto bullet journals and so if you don't know the originator of the bullet journal system is Ryder Carroll and I will link um, his original video down below for you but it's a system that uses in essence pretty much a blank page uh, and allows you to structure your planning system however you want or need to structure it so you can you know have the kinds of spreads or the kinds of layouts that you need and uh, I found that really really intriguing and I started uh, looking at all of the stuff that people do and uh, got a ton of great ideas and uh, decided to jump in. When I started, I had a bunch of these. These are moleskin Kaye notebooks, and I got them, a stack of them at Costco. They were really inexpensive. Um, so they're like a composition book, but they're a little bit nicer. The ruling is a little bit different. The paper is a little bit different. Uh, and so I'd, I'd purchased a stack of these to, uh, to write in because one of my professions is I'm a writer. So I had these sitting around, so I decided to start out with these. And one of the reasons that I preferred um, the composition book is because I do like a lot of note taking. And you can certainly note take in the smaller journals, but of course it's gonna take up more room. And um, this is my normal writing size. Uh, this, these are some notes that I took from a book about writing mysteries. You know, I've got like a couple of pages um, even, and I'm not even done this book yet, I think three there. And so if, if my format is smaller, it's going to take up a lot more space. Also, um, I have some, also I do um, actual writing, like when I'm away from home or I just feel like, I, you know, the, the creative process is working better with longhand, I do some of my writing longhand in journals. And so this also gives me more room. I also have certain kinds of spreads that I use, and I'll show you some of them that are more, um, I call it a dashboard style that need a bigger space. And so for me, um, composition books are the way to go. And I haven't seen anybody else um, on YouTube, and maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, do, um, do bullet journaling in a composition book. So I thought, you know, maybe somebody else might be interested. And another thing about the composition books is they're cheaper. And I, you know, if, if I can get the bigger size, and it's cheaper, those are, you know, two wins in my column. There are some downsides to the composition books, of course. You don't have the elastic that keeps a closure, you don't have a pen loop, you don't have, there's a lot of things you don't have. And the covers are a little bit flimsier, so, you know, there's a lot of wear and tear. And I, um, right off the bat, when I first saw people journaling with the traveler style notebooks, I thought, well, that's a great idea because you can put in as many as you want to put in, you know, all of the great reasons why people like this, I, but I couldn't find anything for travelers. Then on Amazon, I actually found a traveler style cover for composition books that fit composition books. And I will link it down below, of course, but it is from Rustic Ridge. I'm not sure if that's gonna show up on camera, but it's from Rustic Ridge. And I will link it down below in the description box. And so this way I can have my composition books in the traveler's notebook. I right now keep keep two in it. I keep um, my regular bullet journal and my writer's bullet journal and there is easily room for a third. So if I just like if I'm traveling or whatever and I want to have an extra one in here for just writing, if I, you know, I want to keep working on my my book even though I don't have my computer with me, I can have that in there and it's going to fit no problem. It doesn't come this one doesn't come with elastics to keep it closed. Um so I have this that I had from another journal and I just kind of stick it on there and I put my pens onto the loop there and that keeps them all um, organized for me. I also bought a pen loop that I, to attach here uh, and I'm going to, I may try that out. I'm not sure because I'm, I'm not sure I want to stick something on the leather if I'm, if I'm sure I need it 
right now, so I'm waiting to try that out, but you can do that option too. Um, to keep these attached, I used, I, I really loved this charm from um, James Davenport. I got this with the Michaels coupon at Michaels. It comes with these elastics as well as the charm. So I use those to attach my composition book in here. You put, I put the elastics here and I just kind of put these two together with the elastics. More traditionally with the traveler's notebook, you're gonna go ahead and you know do it around the spine. But I figured when you've got only two of these, um, these slip into the little pockets here on either end. And so this holds it in perfectly well. And I don't have to worry about if this is gonna put wear and tear on you know the edge of my traveler's journal. It's just me being a little bit you know, over over protective of it because it's new and pretty and you know, when I when I do travel and put that third one in, I will put it along the spine as well and then take that, see how that holds up. But this works just fine for me as is. So you can see on each side there's a pocket. On this end I put a little 2017 calendar. So if I need to reference that, I also keep my little to-do notepad. Um, this is a printable from Boho Berry. I will link it down below. Most of the things that are printables in here that you see are going to be from Boho Berry. Uh, I just love her. I love her aesthetic and I love the stuff that she does. And if you're a member of her tribe, you get access to all of her free printables. So definitely um, that's worth a look out. And then in the, each of the Moleskine Kayes have this little pocket here. So I've got, I can stick stuff in there if I want to. And then you'll see when I show you my um, dashboards, I use a lot of these post-it notes on things. Um, then I've got my second one. This is also from um, Boho Berry. This is my writer's journal. Uh, and then of course in the back here, again, I've got this little pocket from the Moleskine. This is a hack I saw in some video. Um, I don't remember who it was. So this is if, if this is you, let me know and I will definitely link you. Or if you know who did give this hack, let me know because I would like to credit it, but I can't for the life of me remember I saw it. But this is just to use an old credit card or whatever you have and you kind of just wrap the washi tape around it so that it's always there whenever you need it. You don't have to dig out your washi tape or carry them all around with you. Uh, and that pretty much carries everything I need all in, in the journal. And then I, like I say, I put this around and got my pens there too. So in terms of my actual layouts, I started probably late last summer to do the bullet journaling and went through a bunch of different kinds of spreads that I really didn't like, made a whole bunch of mistakes. So um, that's one thing, if you're just starting bullet journaling, I would say don't be afraid of making mistakes because that's the beauty of the bullet journal is that it can grow and adapt along with you. And so if you like, if you do a spread and you don't like it, do another one, change it. It's not a big deal. You're not stuck into a system the way you are if you buy a planner that has like a rigid, you know, framework that you're trying to fit yourself in and that is the whole main reason that I love this because I do make mistakes and I do change my mind a lot and this has worked for me I it took me about three or four months to kind of figure out what worked for me around December of last year I really got it nailed down and I'm just now finishing up the bullet journals that I had from January through May and I'm starting in I'm migrating in to my new bullet journals here for June so I want to just give you a quick look at how I have set this up I want my very first page to be my 2017 this way whenever I open up my bullet journal I've got my goals right there and you see I haven't migrated a lot of stuff in yet but it's coming so I list my goals I have the top goals that I really want to focus on and you know some people pick like a word for the year for their to focus them I want I'm gonna have like one particular sentence that summarizes the big focus that I have um, for 2017 and I do already have this in um, my other journal I'm just gonna migrate it over but there's some stuff that's a little private so I figured you guys didn't want to see that um, here's my index just when I first started bullet journaling I was like, why do you need an index that's stupid you know you're just gonna go to the page that you know your last page uh, and then of course as I started working through it I realized how super important it is to have um, this index because I'll do a spread and then of course you do another spread and then you want to find that spread that was way back there but you don't know exactly where it is and your index solves that problem for you in no time flat and I love it. I also use these little tabs. These are posted tabs. You can get a pack for you know a few dollars that have a bunch of these but they're reusable um, and I use this to sort of because just one or two elastics is not enough for me to, to be able to get at all the pages that I want to get to. So this helps me to mark every page that I know I want to check periodically. 
So once a month, I go through page by page, make the, make sure I'm keeping up on everything I want to keep up on. But like once a week, I will I maybe want to check certain certain spreads. So these tabs help me um, to do that. I have started this out with four pages for brain dump because I like my brain dumps to be at the at the front. So I always have access to them quickly and easily. Uh, and I know I'm going to probably need at least that based on my use for last year. Um, affirmations and quotes. As I come across affirmations and quotes that I love, I like to put them in. I love my future log. So I will go through and I will write things that I know um, are beyond this month that I'm going to have to do in here. And then when I'm setting up my monthly spread, I will go through and pull everything off of here that I need and put it on there. That way I always have a place, even though I'm only working one month at a time in the bullet journal, I always have a place to record things that are farther out in the in the distance. And you can see that I'm going here from July 2007 to June uh, 2018. So this gives me a full year. Um, whenever I finish this bullet journal, uh, it, my guess is that it'll probably be about four months. So I'll probably be finishing it around October, November. I will take my future log in my next bullet journal and make it a year. So it would go run from November 2017 to November 2018 because I find that having a full year to plan out these um, these events that are going to be happening to me works really well for me. Um, next uh, is my my waiting on list and this is this has been one of my most used spreads because if it's out of sight for me, it's out of mind for me. So I will forget that I have a package coming and that it hasn't arrived yet. And since one of the things that I do, I have a nail blog where um, I'm being sent products to review. And if they don't show up and I can't do my review in a timely fashion, I need to alert the, the, the maker of that. I use a list for my shopping staples because that way anytime I'm going grocery shopping, um, I'm a couponer. <laughs> so... Um, there are certain times when I get certain kinds of coupons and I need to strike now. So like, for example, Safeway will do things like you get a, you know, a $5 off a $25 purchase. And so that's when I know to go and fill up on my staples, things that don't normally go on sale or whatever. For some reason, it's super easy for me to get, uh, to forget things that I need at Costco. So I'm going to be creating a list of those items, um, things to check out. And this is one thing I have migrated so far. So um, books that I want to read, movies I want to see, TV shows that have been recommended to me that I want to check out, um, websites that I want to check out for various reasons. Um, and then this is getting into my projects list. So this is a printable, again, from Boho Berry, based on Getting Things Done by David Allen. A great book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, and so these are the basic principles of sort of making sure that your life is clear and organized. And one of the things that I do um, as a result of that is a, is a project list. So for, you know, my professional stuff, that's different. But for the rest of my life, this is my projects list. I have um, one list for my writing projects, my nail blog projects and other things in my life like right now I'm doing the um the life changing magic of tidying up and getting my whole house organized so that would be a project that's going to be listed here and then my someday maybe list so for things that I would like to get to but they're not a priority right now so here is what that looks like in the journal I'm migrating from and you can see I have a slightly different I I didn't I ended up not liking this layout so much so I laid it out a little bit differently here um, and I decided that rather than just project next action pending, I wanted to have the different um, the different columns for this. So what I was doing here before is I was putting like, this is a book I'm working on and here's the status. So for Deadly Avatar, my next action is querying. I'm in the process of querying. And this column here were for things that, um, projects that are pending on or waiting on. So, um, you know, for like my blog, these would be the next things that I'm going to be doing with my blog. Um, the organization of my house, sorting everything out. This is the next step for me to go through all my costume jewelry. This is one of the reasons why I like the bigger composition notebook format because I can move these around easily. When I'm done with this step, I can write the next one when I'm out of space, like in this one, pull it off, put a next, uh, a next post-it note on there with my next actions on it. When this project is done, like when I'm done organizing my house, for example, that just gets pulled off and it's done. Or maybe there's a delay and I put it over here in the pending waiting, which is now called the someday maybe um, file. So I like being able to have these post-it notes to be able to move them around and uh, whenever I want to, however I want to. It works for me visually and it works for me in terms of 
um, flexibility. So this is one of the things I love about the composition book and why I like the bigger size. So this is my project list. This is what I call my project dashboard. So like when I said I was querying Deadly Avatar, um, querying can go on for quite a while. So that is definitely the status of the project and, and the next phase of it. But here I can write like exactly, I can track exactly the work that I have been doing. So I can say, so for, you know, for this book, I've queried this agent for this book. I've, you know, or I can say for this book, I've revised this, you know, this many different pages or whatever that project is, I can track what next action I just took. And you might say, well, why, why bother with that? If you've got, you know, your status on here of what you should be doing next or what you are doing next. Well, one of the things I found for me to keep me motivated is I can do a lot of work on stuff and feel like I've accomplished nothing. I could look at the end of the day or at the end of the month and be like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've accomplished nothing because I'm not, you know, necessarily where I want to be. Well, a list like this, I can go back and I can go, no, actually I did quite a lot of work and my brain may forget about it or and be focusing on what's next but this lets me take a moment pat myself on the back for the things i've accomplished and know that i am you know making progress and it allows me a way to really see that and track that for each of my projects i also have a specific breakdown this is my writing breakdown and I haven't uh, brought it over yet, but you can see it looks a lot like my future log because it basically is a future log for my writing. So for each month I put down for each of the projects I have that I'm working on within my writing, I put where I hope to be because I found that goal setting really helps me to be able to make progress towards my goals. And I've also found that going and evaluating them every month, did I, did I make it to where I said I was going to be? If I didn't, why has there been some change in status? You know, maybe an agent requested materials or maybe there's some sort of Twitter contest or something that I really need to prioritize. So this allows me to go through, see what I've done. Um, and you'll notice that as we got into March and April and May, um, there I'm crossing things out. I'm rewriting things. I'm adding things in. So the, so this allows me to have that, to have that goal setting, but constantly reassess it every month and really be able to move forward with it. And you can see I haven't done June yet because I haven't migrated it yet. Um, but I'll go through and see where I was and um, what I need to do. And I will set up my next six months because I do like to work six months in advance. When I set goals for myself that go, okay, what am I going to be doing February, then March, then April, then May, then June, it really helps me to start breaking down that elephant into those individual bites. The old metaphor, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? This helps me start carving out those bites and tracking the progress that I need to make. The same sort of thing for a project breakdown for my blog, but I do this one very differently. So here's the project breakdown for my blog. And what this does, what this is, is I have um, different reviews that I have to do. This is why I have two different manicures on my hands, by the way, in case you're wondering, and why they're like kind of fancy is because I review nail art products and nail polishes. So I will have to um, do swatches of manis. I will have to do nail art and I do nail videos. And so what this does is it allows me to track for each product that I have in. Um, what I have to do for it when I, I mark it off when I accomplish it and it has two purposes one is um, it allows me uh, to organize but it also allows me to feel really good like when I look at this and I look at how much I've accomplished um, I feel really really good really really good about knowing um, where my time has gone and what I've really been doing to build my blog okay and here is my blog dashboard and this is one of the one of the main reasons why I really love the bigger composition style so here's what it looks like in my current one I haven't migrated it over yet and what it allows me to do is there are videos I need to make videos I need to edit videos I need to post all kinds of stuff and the the and the blue post-it notes are things that I've been sent for review. The red post-it notes are just things that I purchased on my own that I'm really excited about and that I want to review. And this allows me to um, know exactly at a glance what stage I'm at, what needs to happen next. While I have that other more comprehensive list, this allows me a very visual way to know what I have. Like right now, you can see I've got a lot of swatching I have to do. Sometimes I've got a ton of editing to do. And so if I need to just at a glance get a feel for how to organize my week, this is going to help me do that. Um, I've left a blank space because there's always something I forget. So that brings us to the monthlies. Uh, um, and for the beginning of each week, I um, put washi. I usually use this black and white striped washi so that when I have more than one month, like you can see in, in this one, I've got several months. I can quickly flip to whichever month I need because I can see it. And that's a hack I saw in, um, I've seen it in several videos. I also do a tab. 
So this will take me to the current month and then this will take me to the current week. I like this kind of traditional bullet journal um, view of you know, just listing out the days of the month and then I put what I need to accomplish here. I also usually write a word or two about how the day went after the fact. Um, another thing that I do with these post-its that I absolutely love is you can see I've got these little tags that um, remind me when I need to do things. So I have some of them that are just like every once a month. So like these flea meds for my fur babies. Once that's done, it'll get put over here until I make my next spread for the next month. Um, some of them are every three weeks or every week and then you know I can um, adjust them as I need to. This really helps me with my um, weekly tasks, bi-weekly tasks, all that kind of stuff. It really helps me to um, keep track of that. Uh, I will write here a list and this will go on through the month of all the tasks that I need to do. So this is mostly, this, this section here is just mostly the tasks that kind of happen as life occurs or that um, I know for a fact that I'm carrying over from a previous month. So here's one. So here's one from March that uh, is actually filled out to show you what I do. Um, the post-it notes are for things that just are personal information of either mine or somebody else's. I also I'm changing this a little bit. I showed you. I'm going to actually move this out here so that it doesn't interfere so much with this. But this gives me um, plenty of room and I'll have post-its here so it looks like there's wasted space but lots of time there's post-its here for things that I need to remind myself or I need to move or whatever and all of that space gets used. Then this, it's not really just enough to have a to-do list so I will always have a to-do list and in my mind I feel like I have it prioritized but one of the tips that I've heard is that you should physically prioritize the things that have to be done today and mark those and do those first. Like I say, it's something I always kind of feel like I do anyway with my to-do lists, but doing it, actually going through and doing it um, this way physically has had an effect on me. And as silly as it sounds, because you think, well, if you're doing it in your head and you know what you gotta do, well, but then I end up going, okay, yeah, I've gotta do this and this, let me do this. And I maybe don't do the one that I know I absolutely should be doing because I'd rather do this one. And then I, that way I can feel like I've gotten stuff done, but then this is sort of um, just sitting there. So this act of prioritizing and really just assigning that number to it and then going through and putting it in my weekly is um, has been really super helpful. And I will show you why I have it washing in like this in a second. Next up here, this is where I break down my goals. So I've got my project list and then I have that um, tracker which has my the exact goals, the next step goals that I have. So then I take those next step goals that I have, next action goals I have for the project and I bring them to the monthly level and say, okay, for this month, what are the things that I want to accomplish? So there might be four or five little next action steps for each of my writing projects or my blog or whatever. Uh, and that's where I put these here. And that's sort of, now I've taken the elephant and now I'm cutting out the little sections that I'm gonna eat, right? Um, every month I do a review and look what went, what went right, what um, needs improvement, just so that I can kind of remind myself to do a review and keep myself on track. I also like to um, uh, list out my active projects so I know what's going on. This is another printable from Boho Berry and this is a monthly tracker. So let me, show you um, from March what this looks like when it's filled out. So I've got, you know, all of my different things there that I need to do. And yeah, you can notice, you'll notice that there are certain things that I did not get checked off. So, um, and even here, like it says, I didn't get to the rest of my organizing, um, but I, the big closet overhaul was unexpected. So I was able to overhaul my big closet and that's why actually the rest of the stuff didn't get done because I found mold in my closet and we needed to deal with that. Anyway, you don't need to hear about that. Um, my pro projects are out and I sort of know what's going on with them. And then the Boho Berry Tracker, uh, I go, I list the things that I want to track. So, so these are all the things that I want to track on a, a daily or semi-daily basis that I know I need to, to do and I want to make sure that I'm doing. Um, so this allows me to do that. Uh, and you can see that, you know, for some things I was really, really good. So I'm supposed to be reading every single day and I only missed one day. Uh, I write every single day and, you know, I took a couple of like little weekends off, but that's it. And um, uh, you can see with my genealogy project, I did not do so good, didn't do any um, work that month, but this allows me to keep on top of what I'm accomplishing and what I'm not. And I love that tracker so much. Um, this is my June 
time log. So every day at the end of the day, I will go in and put what I did for the day, how I spent my time. Um, I don't do this necessarily every month, but I do like to do it periodically to do a check for um, how I'm using my time and make sure my time productivity is good. And so here's what it looked like for March. I went, uh, I, you can see I missed a few days here and there, but I just go through and track some um, my trends and see where my time is going when. Um, usually when I do this, I'll go through and I'll um, like highlight problem areas and just analyze what um, I actually am doing with my time to make sure that I'm not doing a whole lot of stuff that I'm not supposed to do. This is my March recap. So kind of the cool things that um, happened to me in March or things I want to remember. Uh, and then um, I also try to do this, just um, know like what I'm reading, what I'm watching, all that kind of stuff. This is kind of the journaling part. And one of the reasons why I really love um, the bullet journal system is that I can throw in stuff like this and have an aspect of journaling in amongst my planning. And then we get into the weeklies. And this one isn't migrated yet, so let me show you what it looks like here. So I always like to have one little inspirational saying or something just to kind of get me going. So now these are my weekly goals. So in the monthly goals for March, I had taken that big project list and the next action project goals and broke and I broke that down into things I wanted to accomplish for the month. So then for each week when I'm planning my week, I go through and then I break those monthly, goal down, monthly goals down into what do I want to accomplish this week. Um, and again, just kind of by those, turning that elephant into smaller and smaller little sections. Um, again, it looked like this is wasted space. I put post-its here. This is my um, grocery store shopping list. This is my uh, Costco shopping list. So I can always jot things down when I need to there. I also, you can see I sometimes do other little notes here. So all of the space actually usually pretty much is taken up. I have a mini tracker for just drinking, cleaning, organizing. Um, um, I, this is something I do because I tend to, especially when I'm really focused on work, I tend to neglect myself and my personal relationships. I just get very tunnel vision-y. So this is a reminder that um, I want to try to do something special each week with a friend and something special each week for myself so I don't forget to prioritize that, those other aspects of my life. Um, and I usually do a week in review, although you can see this week I did not do it because sometimes I just, you know, don't. And that's the beautiful thing about the bullet journal too, is I don't have to, but next week again, if I want to, I can. So then for each day, and I put this out, I, I, I know some people do each day as they go, but I do an entire week um, at a time because that allows me to plan out my week and go through and break out for my weekly goals, for example, what I'm going to do on which day. So that way I've got my plan broken down into those bite-sized pieces that I'm going to do each day. This is the bite I'm taking on that project. This is the bite I'm taking on that project. So everything goes in here. Um, what I need to do uh, for all of the things in my life. On this side, I put um, if I'm having, you know, like if I'm having lunch with somebody or doing something special with somebody, other kinds of appointments I do, they go over here on this side. And you see, another thing that I've started to do is do this as a time planner. So from, um, I'm, a, I'm a night owl, and I usually go to bed around 4 a.m. I know it sounds crazy, and I get up around 12. That's my eight hours of sleep. And so I break down my day, you know, by hour into what I attend, intend to do during that day, how I intend to do it. Um, I don't always necessarily follow that, but I find that when I take the time to break that down, I end up following it more closely than I would have and being more productive than I would have. So I really like doing that. Although you can see some days I forget to do it or I just feel like I don't have time to do it. But my goal is to try to do that every single day, especially in the new bullet journal. I like checking off boxes. I like filling in boxes. It makes me feel like I've accomplished something. So I use boxes. I do use an arrow for if something is migrated, um, but I keep my symbols really add them to a minute. So I showed you before that I had this to-do list wash it in. And what I do is I'll go through anything I've, you know, I brainstorm tasks that I have come up that I need to do. I can put it on here and then I can look at whatever I have done for the day. Uh, and I can um, put that on here and then I can prioritize. And then I'm able to put like an exact priority on what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. So that's it for my regular bullet journal. Um, I may add in some more spreads, but for me, this is about tracking those projects, really making sure I'm on task with them um, and keeping a, an eye on everything that I need to do. So if you would like a special video about how I approach project tracking, let me know and I'll kind of walk you through step by step. 
Um, but I've really found this to be the most awesome system, the bullet journal system, to, to put in what I need to do to make sure I'm tracking all aspects of my projects and keeping everything on, uh, on, on track. Uh, so um, thank you for watching, and I hope there was something in here that you found useful. Bye! Thank you.